welcome back to database training sessions yesterday or in my previous session i just gave an introduction of sql server and ssms ssms is sql server managed in studio using which we manipulate sql server database as a developer you have access to ssms ssms is a ide that is interactive development environment used by developers to develop database and to test the developed database application okay so using ssms we create database and we even manage the database administrators use ssms to manage the database developers they use it to develop database so developing database means here creating tables creating procedures create functions creating functions creating triggers so whatever different objects are needed we create them using the ssms sql server management studio so using them we manipulate we 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 actually develop database at the same time administrators they can actually administer the database so administration is backing up database restoring database creating users so similarly i mean many things related to administration they can do improving the performance of the database when more and more users they start using database what happens there performance may suffer in such cases administrators can administer the database with the help of ssms okay so yesterday or in the previous session i have shown you the ide interactive development environment using which i created database and even i told that using commands only we should create or we should uh, i mean uh, develop database application uh, database objects so reason when you use commands you understand how commands are going to work but using gui when you do everything is done by the underlying graphical user interface you don't know exactly what commands are actually driving the database there okay so therefore if you do manually everything that would be nice now click on connect and get it connected to the instance of sql server so sql server instance here it is spn express 2008 this is 2008 r2 that version i am using and already hyphen pc is it is the server name server name followed by instance name with that i get connected and as i told you yesterday i use here windows authentication so using windows authentication i am getting connected using windows authentication i get connected here so connect windows authentication does not require special uh, i mean uh, user id and password it does not require here any special user id and password whatever password or whatever credentials we have with the say uh, windows login same we can use to get connected to database so using same credentials we are getting connected so once it is opened once it is opened we have actually this interface here we have this ide and in the left side we have our object explorer in the right side here you can open a query editor window so when you click on the new query it comes up here a query editor window is going to come up here here you can type various commands different types of commands can be typed here and you can execute similarly using gui also you can invoke the commands using graphical user interface also you can be executing commands here when you click on the this databases folder i mean on this plus when you click it expands and it uses further folders as we know there is actually one folder system databases so in the system data system database of ready by databases they are available for us with the instance of this sql server so here we have four databases which are predefined master database modern database msdb and tabdb we have four databases one is master other one is model other one is msdb and one more is here tabdb so these are all user defined adventure works 2008 r2 adventure works data warehouse 2008 r2 so all these are different databases created by user even we created yesterday one database so that was retailer db we created yesterday we created 
some retailer DB. So using that, I mean, we created a table also. Let us see retailer DB. Uh, this is retailer DB here. Expand the tables. This is uh, this is some other database, not this one. Yesterday we created, sorry, we created some tourist DB. I think, I think it was uh, it is uh, not tourist DB. Let me open exact one. Okay, sample DB we created yesterday. So this is tables. This contains just one table called as category table. So this is one table called as category table. Here I define category. So category whatever uh, uh, whatever attributes we require the category table that we can find in the category table. So this is a category table. Here we have columns cat ID, cat name, cat label, super cat ID. Cat ID is going to be holding integer type of data. Cat name is string data. Cat level is again integer data. Super cat ID is also integer data. Okay. So this this yesterday we have done, or in, the, in our previous session we have done with this. Now before we proceed further, let us understand what type of data we can keep in the SQL Server, or what are the different types of data available in the SQL Server. Let us discuss. Okay, in SQL Server tables, each column. Or a local variable. Okay, in, in SQL Server, see whenever you work with SQL Server, you may be manipulating databases. Uh, sorry, you may be, you may be manipulating tables, or you may be working with processors or functions. So in such cases, you may use some data. Okay, so the the data may be a particular column in the given table, or it may be a local variable, or it can be some expression. And sometimes what you do, you pass parameters to processors or to functions. Okay, so all these have a relative or related data type. That means whatever data you are passing should be one of the data types available with the SQL Server. So those data, I mean whatever you manipulate there, it's a column in the table, or that can be an expression or a local variable, or it can be a parameter which you are passing to a processor or function should be, I mean, related to predefined data types in the SQL Server. Okay, so a data type is an attribute that specifies the type of data that the object can hold, that is integer data type, character data type, monetary data, date type data, binary data, okay, and so on. So like that, uh, here SQL Server can deal with different types of data. It can deal with different types of data. So here, data type meaning is, it's an attribute that specifies the type of data that the, an, an object can hold. So stored processors they can be holding say variables. They can be local. They can hold local variables. So local variables should belong to one type of data. Similarly, you take SQL Server table. So in the table, columns are going to hold values. So every column should be belonging to some of the data types. Okay. So therefore, a data type is nothing but an attribute that specifies the type of data that is going to be held by the object. Okay. So SQL Server supplies, that means there are predefined data types already with the I mean, uh, database management system, the DBMS, the data types are available for us. Okay, there, there are certain predefined types, we can use them and further if you want to create your own type, even it, it gives us a provision to create our own type of data also. So sometimes existing types may not meet our requirement. So in such cases, we can actually create our own type also user different types are also possible sometimes. So if you want to create your own type, it's possible to create your own type. Okay, you can create your own type also in the SQL Server. But most of the time, I mean whatever data types are available, they are sufficient. When you feel that they are insufficient, in such cases, you can develop your own type. So in the SQL Server, we can divide the data types into certain categories. You can have actually into different uh, categories there. They can be exact numbers, they can be approximate numerics, they can be date and time related, they can be character strings, and they can be unicode character strings, they can be binary strings, and other types of data. So these are the I mean uh, categories I can say, data type categories. First one is what exact numerics. You can give them exact numbers. So that is going to be with the integers, mostly with the integers. 
integers further are divided into four sub types so one is actually and in small int then big int you have tiny int we have and one more thing is we have actually long okay we have four types one is tiny int small int then followed by int and big int okay we have these types tiny int is only going to use only uh, tiny is going to, tiny int is going to use one byte so when it's small int it's going to use two bytes of space when it is integer or int it uses four bytes of space when it is say big int it uses eight bytes of space so like this we have actually exact numerics it is here a tiny int or small int or integer or it can be big integer these can be called as exact numerics similarly we have approximate types as far as approximate types are concerned it is something like float double we can call them as approximate types there so it's called as approximate numerics the numerics are going to be approximate so float and double can be such type of data similarly we use their date and time we are going to use actually date and time okay so date and time so in the case of date and time it's going to be date then date time 2 we have date time date time offset small date time and time like this further we have subtypes in the date and time subtypes we can have in the date and time okay so these can be called as exact numerics they can be sorry uh, it's not uh, related numerics it's date and time so date and time can be here a date time date date time 2 date time offset small date time as well as time then after that we have character strings so using that string of characters we can represent in programming language we call it as strings but here it's called as character type of data so here we have three subtypes it's char then var char and other one is text we have char we have var char we have text these are going to be subtypes within the character strings a character requires one byte of space one character requires one byte of space so just one byte of space is required for holding one character data okay so here under character strings we have three subtypes character var char then similarly text we say char then var char other one is text under unicode character strings we have ncar ncar stands for national character we call it as national character similarly nvar char and one more thing is n text so these actually come under unicode character strings then similarly we have binary strings binary data see sometimes you want to save an image in the database or sometimes you want to save an exe file in the database or sometimes you want to save some audio file in the database so in such cases we can use the binary type of data so binary strings are divided into three sub types one is binary then var binary and one more is image okay we have binary var binary and image these are going to be sub types related to binary strings and other types of data available with the sql server are one is cursor other one is time stamp time stamp can give you current date and time right now what is the date and time you can get with the help of the time stamp then you have hierarchy id unique identifier sql variant then xml table spatial types so these are going to be some other data types most of the time we deal with the say exact numerics or approximate numerics or we may use date and time sometimes we use true or false values that is called as bit type of data then we deal with the character strings or with the unicode character strings and sometimes you may have to deal with the you may have to deal sometimes with the binary data so in such cases you can use binary strings and these days people are using very much xml also xml also one such data type available with the sql server most most commonly used types are character type of data date type data then numeric data and other thing is sometimes we use xml data and seldom we use binary type of data so depending on the requirements we use but under normal cases we mostly use numerics character strings the true false values that is nothing but bit value then similarly we use here uh, we use date and time and we use xml 
these are quite commonly used or more commonly used data types with the sql server tables okay so depending on the data available in the table you are going to write procedures they are also we use when you write procedures you may be using cursors also so cursors are nothing but private memory area when you retrieve so many rows at one time using sql command with select command you will be retrieving so many rows to manipulate each and every row individually you can use cursor so using cursors we can manipulate rows one by one row you can fetch with the help of the cursor then you can manipulate so for that purpose we use cursors so these are going to be data types available with the sql server okay so further let us discuss in detail about the data types first of all come to come to say exact numerics we discuss in detail about the exact numerics in this so first one is what in the, in the exact numerics we have first one is tiny int okay the next one is small int then next type of data is int and one more is here big int so these four sub types we use so these are going to be tiny int small int int and big int and apart from that we use here money type of data then decimal type of data okay then similarly we use small money we use small money and one more thing is numeric even this one also we use so we use these types so tiny int it uses one byte of data it's as good as one byte and apart from this we use one more type of data that's called as bit bit basically represents zero or one bit stands for what exactly binary digit since the binary digits we have only two symbols one is zero other one is going to be one so tiny int it just one byte that means what eight bits small int is going to be here two byte then when it's int this is four byte we use four byte here and in the case of big int this is eight byte we use this way so for storing data type of tiny int one byte of space is required so if it is small int type of data two bytes are required when it is int type of data you need to have four bytes and big int is going to be using eight bytes so these are actually compatible types if you take tiny int data you can cast it to big int okay so tiny int data you can say it is a big int but big int data you cannot say with tiny int because big int range is more you may have more and more data all the data may take more than one byte therefore saving more than one byte of data into one uh, more than one byte of data into one byte is not possible so their truncation may take place we need to be careful with that so tiny int small int int and big int these are nothing but integer types of data in the case of integer type of data they can be both negative as well as positive you can hold in that negative data as well as positive data so in the tiny int the range can be minus 128 to 127 this can be the range similarly when it is small int it is minus 32768 to 32767 this is the range 32767 can be the range for the small int and as far as int is concerned it's going to use four bytes so 2 to the power 32 it's going to be the range so you have negative numbers as well as positive in between you have zero so int is going to be again a signed integer it can have both negative as well as positive numbers even big int is like that now next thing is money type of data okay so we have here money data money data see see money and small money data types are accurate to 10000s of the monetary units that they represent for informatica so the money and small money data types are accurate to 100th of the monetary units that they represent so we can represent here periods something like we can actually use here we can separate a period to separate partial monetary units like cents for example you take rupees or cents we know that 100 paisa equal to 1 rupee now suppose you want to represent something like 22 rupees 50 paisa therefore what you do 22.5 22.50 
Similarly, in US, if, if you deal with US currency, you may be using cents. So, 100 cents may, may one dollar. So, therefore, if you have to pay some 10.5 dollars, you need to write 10.50. So, like that, we use a dot with the help of that, we separate. So, this is what exactly monetary type of data. Monetary type of data can use up to 8 bytes. Up to 8 bytes space you can use and small money can be using only 4 bytes of data. So, monetary can be using here 4 bytes of data. We can use 4 bytes of data using actually with monetary type of data. Sorry, with small money. So, in the case of small money, it is going to be 4 bytes. In the case of money, it is going to be here 8 bytes. For monetary data, we use these types. One is called money, other one is small money. Okay, see these types of data can use different currency symbols. Currency symbols can be dollar symbol, a cent symbol, or it can be pound sign. We can use a currency sign, an N sign we can use. Then we can use Bengali rupee mark, that is in actually say Bangladesh we use. Then similarly, Thai currency symbol we can use, Lira sign we can use, then column sign we use. So, like that, we can use actually different currency symbols. With the money type of data, whether it is money or small money, we can use a currency symbol with that. We can use a currency symbol along with the money type of data. Currency or monetary data does not need to be encoded in single quotation mark. Whenever you try to represent money type of data, we need not put that in the single quotes. Normally, character strings we put in the single quotes. Suppose I want to say something like this in the database column, SQL Server. So, if this is a character string, I need to specify in single quote. But whenever it is money type of data, we can put something like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 3, 4, something like this, I can write. We need not put that in the single quotes. We need not put that in the single quotes there. So, if you put in the single quote, that will become actually a uh, string type of data or character type of data. So, here money type of data, we should not specify in the single quotes. We need not specify that in the, in the single quotes. So, here even you can use the currency symbol also before this. You can put some dollar with that you can save it. Whenever you try to insert data, you can put a dollar then followed by 1234.34 dot three four, you can specify like that. So, you have here both decimal, sorry, both money and small money. So, in the case of money, it uses here 8 bytes, but when it is small money, it can use 4 bytes. After decimal point up to 4 digits, it can store data. After decimal point up to 4 digits, it can be storing data, but after that, it does not. So, this is what exactly exact numerics we say. This is exact numeric. But as far as float and double are concerned, even after decimal point, in the case of float, you can go up to 6 digits. And in the case of double, you can go up to 15 digits to uh, up to that you can get exact values. But after that, there is no guarantee. So, as far as money is concerned here, money or small money, after decimal point, you can go up to 4 digits. Okay. So, this is what exactly money type of data. This is what exactly money type of data. Next one is numeric type of data or we go with the decimal type of data. Let us look into decimal type of data. So, in the case of decimal type of data, it is we use actually a precision and we use a scale. In the case of decimal type of data for representing floating point numbers we use. Whenever you want to represent floating point numbers, we use decimal type of data. So, decimal type of data can take a precision as well as it can scale a number. Okay. So, it can take actually some precision and scale both can be given in that. So, here fixed precision and scale numbers. When maximum precision is used, value values you can have something like from minus 10 plus to 38 plus 1 to 10 plus to 38 minus 1 that can be the range. So, here we use precision as well as scale. Whenever you want to define any decimal type of data, you can represent in this manner. Decimal followed by here precision and here it is going to be scale. Like this you are going to define the type of data. So, here precision meaning is what maximum total number of digits that will be stored both, both to the left and to the right of the decimal point. Both in the left side and in the right side, in between them you have a decimal point. So, that is called as here precision the maximum total number of 
decimal digits that will be stored both to the left and to the right of the decimal point. The precision must be a value from 1 through the maximum precision of 38. You can have values from 1 to 38 in that. By default, it takes a precision of 18. So, up to 18 digits you can have in the given number if you don't specify any type of data. Suppose I declare something like salary followed by I write decimal. So, in such cases, it takes a precision of 18 digits. Up to 18 digits precision it can take both left side type date, left side data and right side data of the given number, both left side and right side get separate with dot. When you, store, when you store actually a floating point number, they contain left side data as well as right side data, both of them get separated with the period or dot. So therefore, when you say salary decimal, you have left side data as well as right side data, you can separate them with the help of dot. So here, the precision is basically number of digits you are going to use. How many digits you are going to use, we, we say with the I mean precision. So you can use 1 to, here it is 1 to 8, I mean 38 digits. You can have from 1 to 38, okay. So, but default is how much here? 18. When you don't specify anything, it's going to be 18 digits. And next thing is what here? Scale. So, in the case of scale, number of decimal digits that will be stored to the right of the decimal point. After the decimal point, how many digits you want to store, that is going to be scale there. Okay. So, it will be subtracting from the total number of digits. Then, whatever result you get, that will be coming in the left side. Now see, I write like this decimal followed by here, I put salary, then I write here something like 8, then I put here 2. So in such case what happens, in the left side I can have 6 digits, in the right side I can have 2 digits. So overall it is going to be how much? 8 digits. When I write decimal salary 8 comma 2, in the left side you have actually 6 digits and in the right side you can be having only 2 digits. So like this you can define type of data. So 8 is what overall precision whereas 2 is what exactly here the scale of the decimal point up to 2 digits we can have there. So like this we are going to use. We are going to use in this way here. So the precision is 1 to 5, storage bytes are going to be 5 bytes. When the precision is 10 to 19, in such cases it uses 9 bytes. When our precision is 20 to 28, in such cases that can use up to 13 bytes and the precision is 29 to 38, it can use 17 bytes. So decimal is going to be somewhat bigger type of data, type of data is going to be bigger. So what happens with that, when the precision is 1 to 9, when you are having 1 to 9 digits, at that time it uses 5 bytes of space, then when it is 10 to 19, that can use 9 bytes of space. Whenever it is 20 to 28, it is going to use 13 bytes of space. Similarly, whenever number of digits are 29 to 38, that is the precision. So, in such case, it is going to use 17 bytes of space. Okay, it is going to use here 17 bytes of space. So, therefore, here decimal, with the help of that, you can represent here floating point numbers. Maximum number of digits with that can be up to 38. Okay, so I mean up to 38 digits you can be using in that. Here, when you specify the scale, what happens? Number of digits which can be stored in the left side will be equal to. So, number of digits you are going to have, that is precision minus scale. With that, how many digits you can put in the left side, you can get. So, this is also one such type, type of data. So, both decimal and numeric are same. Both decimal and numeric are going to be same types of data. Okay, so decimal as well as numeric are also going to be same type of data. Therefore, these can be exact numerics. Tiny int, small int, int, big int, money, then decimal. So, one more is what here? Small money, numeric, these can be called as exact numerics. And even bit is also called as here exact numerics. In SQL Server, we do not have any Boolean type of data. So, instead of that, we use bit. Bit I mean can store a value either 0 or 1. When it is 0, it is actually false. When it is 1, you can think it as true. So, that way we can be using bit. These are called as exact numerics. We can call this as exact numerics. So next thing is what approximate numerics. Next what we discuss is approximate numerics. 
So in the case of approximate numerics, we have one is flow type of data, other one is real type of data. There are two types of data, one is float, other one is real. So this is what exactly fixed numerics and you have approximate numerics. In the approximate numerics, we use two different type of data. One is float, other one is here, we use real. There is float and there is real, we use these two things. One is float, other one is actually real. So whenever you deal with the float, okay, so whenever it is exactly float, So this is ISO synonym for real is flow 24. So in the ISO we have real and here it is going to be flow 24. So we define flow type of data then followed by how many digits we want to have or how many bits we want to have we can specify them. It is bits not digits, we can specify the bits. So something like this you can define. Float followed by n you can put like this. n is going to be number of bits. It is going to be number of bits that are used to store the mantis of the float number in scientific notation and therefore dictates the precision and storage size. If n is specified, it must be having a value between 1 and 53. The default value is going to be how much here? 53. So default is going to be 53. Up to 53 bits precision we can have with this. Okay. So up to 53 bits precision we can have with the mantis apart. So here the storage size approximately, if the n value is 1 to 24, it is going to use precision can be up to 7 digits and storage size is going to be 4 bytes. When the n value is from 25 to 53, the precision can be up to 15 digits, then that is going to be 8 bytes. So as far as flow type of data is concerned, as far as flow type of data is concerned here, 1 to 24 you have bits in the mantisa. Then in that case, it is going to be 7 digit precision and 4 bytes of space it is going to use. And whenever it is 25 to 53, so in such case, the precision can be up to 15 digits and it is going to use here 8 bytes. So it is going to be 8 bytes in that. Like this we have here floating point data. Okay. So float here, the size of the float is going to be depending on the value of n. But we have a real type of data, it is going to use 4 bytes. Real type of data is nothing but floating point data, it uses 4 bytes of data, whereas flow type of data, depending on the size there, depending on the n, n is nothing but actually there how many bits you are going to use in the mantis apart. So based on that, the size may be varying. As I told just now, when it is 1 to 24, the size is going to be 4 bytes and precision can be 7 digits. That means after decimal point, up to 7 digits you can have guarantee but after that there is no guarantee. For example take 22 by 7, when we use 22 by 7, what is the precision we have in this? This is going to be 3 point, here it is 1 4, you can go after like this, x x x x like this, it is going to be ever ending. This is in fact irrational number. So up to how many digits we can guarantee up to 7 digits. If you declare it as float followed by, I mean if it is using 1 to 24 bits. So in such cases, it is going to be having a precision up to 7 digits of a decimal point. But when it is 25 to, 25 to 53, so in such cases, up to 15 digits we have there. So depending on the number of bits we are using, in such cases what happens? The size of the float changes. So if it is 1 to 24, it uses 4 bytes, but when it is 25 to 53, it is going to use how many 8 bytes. Whereas VN is going to be using always 4 bytes. So these are called as actually approximate data types. These are going to be approximate data types we use. The next thing is date and time. We deal a lot with the dates and times. So we have here one type of data called as date and time. 
data and time category has many subtypes in that data and time having many subtypes in that here one is date second one is here date time 2 here date time 2 then one more is here date time ok similarly we have here date time offset we have here small date time so one more is here time like this we have different type subtypes in the date time subtypes we have in the date time the first one is date second one is date time to date time date time offset small date time and time when you look into date so what exactly it is let us discuss so it is defining a date in the sql server it is one of the types in the sql server data types it is here date with help of that we can be defining a date so for, i mean um, for this you have a string literal format it is in the form of year month and day we have y y y four digit y y y followed by hyphen then two digit mm and followed by you have a hyphen then you have two digit dd so this is a default string format it's the default string format and when you use date type data how many dates you can say see there you can start from something like 0, 0, 001 to 1, 1 like that you can save data so whenever it is date here we are going to save data from the here you have certain range it's going to be 0, 0, 001 to 0, 001 then 0, 001 like this it is to what what can be the ending date see there so it is going to be like 999 followed by we have there month 12 and 31 up to i mean up to this is the range i mean from 1 1 1 2 9 9 9 12 31 you can say so this much data we can save in that this can be the range for the data this much data we can be saving in that okay so that's what january 1 1 ad so after christ actually so ad 1 january 1 2 december 31 999 we can save that many dates so whatever data in between that you enter it is accepted in the given database table so whatever date you give from that range, it's going to be accepted. But below that or above that when you try to enter, definitely it does not accept. It's not going to be accepting in that. Okay. And here you have certain component. So you have here always Y is going to be representing here four digits and MM is going to be two digits and day also is going to be two digits like that we represent here in this. So the length of character is going to be here 10 positions, total 10 positions are in this, see 8 for this and this is 9th one, uh, sorry 4, then 5, then 7, 8, 9 and 10, we use like that, ok. So this is going to be date type of data, so you, you can save data from I mean uh, 1, 1, 1, that is 1st January, 1, 2, so 31st December, 9999 up to that we can save data so this is called as date type of data we need to enter data this is the default format we need to enter y by y then followed by mm then followed by dd we need to separate them with a the hyphen there so using hyphen we are going to be separating them so similar to this we have here one more type of data that is going to be so it may use actually one two three bytes so it may be using here what, 3 bytes actually, 3 bytes fixed size it will be using in this. Next one here it is date and time. We have here date time. So when we discuss about date time, it is going to be storing both date as well as time. You can have both date as well as time in this. So it is going to define a date that is combined with the time of day with fraction of seconds that is based on a 24 hour clock so fraction of seconds also we can be saving in that so when you talk about date and time that can contain both date as well as time 
both you can store in that so you can be storing both but for this you have a different range whenever you are trying to save data with the date time there is a different range for this the range is going to be here that is 1753 we take here followed by 0101 so this is the starting date to we can go up to that is here 999 followed by 12 and 31 this can be the range for date time so whenever you handle date time data this is going to be the range 1753 that is january 1 1753 to so 31st december 9999 that can be the range for the date time data so it's for the date time data like we are going to be saving it so this is for the day time storage size is going to be 8 bytes in this it's going to use here 8 bytes it's going to use actually here 8 bytes of space as far as day time is concerned as far as day time is concerned it use it uses actually 8 bytes of data here in this so one more type is going to be day time 2 we have one more type of data that is day time 2 let us see the difference between day time 2 and date so even this is also defining a date that's combined with the time of day that's based on 24 hour clock okay so date time too can be considered as an extension of the existing date time type that has a larger data range we have larger data range in this so in the case of date time you can have something like this if you go with the date time too it's extension to date and time and here you have larger type of data that is here 0001 then followed by 01 then 01 to here 9999 then 12 and 31 we put so this can be the range for day time 2 so otherwise it's as good as day time the range is going to be more and more in this next type of data is day time offset we have here day time offset so in the case of day time offset it's going to be defining the data date that is combined with the type of day that has time zone awareness and is based on 24 hour clock it, it can actually combine the time zone in this when you go with the day time offset it can be using here time zones it can be using here certain time zones based on the time zone this can be getting saved here so the range for this is also from say 1st january 0001 to 31st december 9999 that can be the same range for the data so january 1 first century 2 so i mean uh, 31 31 12 99 9999 that can be the range for the day time offset okay but here you can be even saving the time zone in this time zone can be saved with the uh, i mean here day time offset so the values for the day time offset can be time zone offset you can take from minus 14 hours through plus 14 hours so from minus 14 hours to plus 14 hours we can use in that so you can use different time zones in this minus 14 hours to i uh, mean plus 14 hours you can be using in the time zone so date time to date time offset we can use for the i mean date and time along with the time zone in such cases you can use date time offset then similarly one other type of data is small date time so when are you dealing with the small date time data so it is a day that is combined with the time of day that is the time is based on a 24 hour day its seconds always zero and without fractional seconds we don't have any and in mean, uh, milliseconds normally with the day time or with day time too you can have there I and mean, in milliseconds also after seconds you can add milliseconds also but as far as small day time is concerned we cannot add any milliseconds there is no provision to add milliseconds as far as small day time is concerned so small date time is going to use both date and time in that date as well as time can be saved in that so time is going to be in the 24 hour uh, format from 00 to up to 23 hours we are going to put in that okay then here the range can be i mean uh, not as high as like date time or date time too so here the range is actually smaller so that is from the range is going to be something like this in the case of small date time we have a range for the dates that is here 
1900 followed by 01 then 01 to up to 2060 up to 2060, 2079 only we get same that is 2079 then followed by year 06 and 06 like this we can save in this range above this range or below this range you cannot enter data you cannot enter date and time for the small date time okay so for small date time you cannot use below this range or above that range you cannot use here and as far as time is concerned we can use there from 00 from 00 to 23 hours 59 minutes and 59 seconds that can be the range for the time time range is going to be 00 for hours then 00 for minutes 00 can uh, be for seconds and from that particular range to 23 hours 59 seconds and 59 minutes and 59 seconds that can be the range for the here for the small date time so small date time can hold few number of dates when compared with the date time to or date time now one another type of data is going to be time type of data it is here time of time type of data so here in the time of time type of data it can define time of day so the time is without time zone awareness and is based on 24 hour clock so here we don't have any time zone awareness just we are going to save the time in this it is going to be in the 24 hour format in 24 hour format it will be getting saved for us so it is going to be defining the day of time it is going to be defining the day of time the range can be here even milliseconds you are going to save in this you can say milliseconds also so it's going to be like this the range for this is we use 00 for hours again 00 is nothing but midnight then we use midnight we use this okay 00 then here 00 like this we use followed by here milliseconds also we put we are going to put milliseconds also in this i use up to 7 digits this is 2 here i can be using 23 hours then 59 minutes and 59 seconds 59 seconds then followed by here i can further use up to 7 digits precision so like this i can be having here time here i am going to store only time information in the date time offset you can save date and time along with that you are going to have a time zone as far as date time offset is concerned but with date time and date time too what happens you don't save any time zone information there you find both date as well as time so for date time the range is smaller when compared with the date time too date time too is actually i mean extended one of the date time so whenever we talk about small date time it can hold the date times from 1900 1st january to 2079 june 6 till that time you can hold the dates in that and in the small date time we can have time also but you cannot have milliseconds we after hours minutes and seconds you cannot have milliseconds but in the time you can put that you can in the, in the time type of data you can put hours you can put minutes you can put seconds followed by milliseconds also you can put in that that is with the time type of data okay so these are related to date time these are related to date time so next type of data is going to be character type of data now we deal with the character type of data so in the case of character type of data okay so characters can be just ascii characters or they can be unicode characters ascii characters they require one byte of space because using ascii characters we can represent english or english like languages we can represent only english or english like languages so english is like what we use is english english like means it may be french it may be german or it may be say spanish so it can be any other west european language normally we use in western europe so those languages they they are called as english like languages it's nothing but english like languages so for english or english like languages ascii is sufficient for us but then we have to represent certain arabic characters 
or when we have to use say Chinese, Japanese and Korean or when we have to use Indian languages in such cases as it will not be enough so therefore in such cases we use Unicode ok our first discussion is going to be character type of data we have here character type of data there are two different type of data one is CAR other one is actually VAR CAR as far as character type of data is concerned one is CAR other one is VAR CAR one more is going to be text now first of all let us look into character type of data so character type of data followed by here we need to specify the size how many characters we want to store we need to specify that character type of data is going to be fixed length it is not a unicode string data it's non unicode string data so here n defines the string length and must be a value from 1 through 8000 here you can put 1 through 8000 1 to 8000 characters we can save with character type of data it can be up to 8 kb approximately it's 8 kb so char char n when you say n must take a value from 1 to 8000 and it does not allow any negative things only positive that too from 1 to 8000 it can take this is what exactly character type of data that is fixed length for example you put something like this name followed by char then specify this as 100 ok but whenever you are trying to save data if you put simply, simply something like microsoft what happens here it is going to use only here 9 characters but how much size you gave there total 100 though you are using 9 characters it is going to use entire 100 because this is fixed length it is not variable length it is fixed length so irrespective of how many characters you are trying to put it is going to use always how many the size you specified that much will be used there though we are inserting 9 characters it is going to use total 100 so what is happening with this time is getting uh, space is getting wasted here here what happens exactly space is getting wasted in this so here name care of 100 when you say it is going to allocate 100 characters for the name column though you enter only 9 characters it is going to use total 100 because this is a fixed length since it is fixed length it is going to be using total 100 spaces here 100 bytes of space will be used so this is what exactly a character type of data you can have values from 1 to 8000 you can take any value for the n from 1 to 8000 here I have taken 100 so like that if you want to take only 10 characters you can put 10 if you want to put 4000 characters you can put 4000 that is up to you depending on the requirement you need to use the next one we now we discuss about the bad cap as far as bad care is concerned, it is not actually fixed length. So it is variable length and this is also non-unicode data. This is also not unicode data, even this is going to be non-unicode data. So this is called as non-unicode string data. It does not contain actually I mean other characters from other languages, except here English or English-like languages. Other characters are not available in this. So it is going to deal with English or English-like languages. So this is not exactly bad care followed by here also you need to specify the size ok here followed by n we specify even here also the range is 1 to 8000 even in the case of bad care also you can use up to 1, 1 to 8000 minimum number of characters are going to be 1 maximum can be 8000 as far as bad care is concerned ok so here suppose I declare name followed by bad care 100 I can specify like this when I enter Microsoft into this it is going to use exactly 9 spaces it will not use actually all the 100 spaces there though I declared maximum 100 characters it can use only here 9 because this requires only 9 character space so therefore it is going to use here only 9 spaces 9 bytes instead of using total 100 bytes but in the character type of data whether you are using it or not since you have allocated it is going to use all the 100 spaces 100, by, 100 uh, bytes there but whenever you deal with the bad cap, though you declare it as 100, maximum is going to be 100. So here how much data you enter, that much space only will be taken. So that is with the bad cap. Similarly, one more type of data we have, that is called as text. And in the bad cap, you have one more thing, it is called as bad cap followed by max. You can put even max here. Whenever you want to save more and more text, suppose you have text data that may be number of uh, it may be some uh, text te text file so in the text file lot of text is available 
So all such text you want to save into database. So in such cases, 8000 characters may not be enough. So therefore, you can use var gap max. So it is basically called as club character large object. We call it as club. Club stands for character large object. When you have a lot of data, character data, when you want to save it, in such cases, you can use var gap max. When you have lots of character data, you want to save into database, you can use var gap max. So var gap max can use up to 2 GB data. In, but, but this type of data, you should have only one such column in the given table. If you take a table, you cannot have more than one column as var of max. Only one of the columns should have var max. So therefore, var max can take up to 2 GB data. You can use up to 2 GB data as far as var max is concerned. So this is what character type of data. This is going to be here, character type of data. Similarly, we have NCAP related. NCAP, we have N var cap. Okay, N var cap, and one more thing is what N text. We have N cap, N var cap, N text. So in the case of N cap, when you talk about N cap, here also we need to specify the size. Here also in the case of N cap, we need to specify the size. When you talk about N cap, here also we need to specify the size. But N cap is for what purpose? For Unicode. So whenever you want to save fixed length Unicode string data, we can use NCAP. It's called a national character. So it is used in the localization concept. So this is not exactly fixed length Unicode string data. Here N is defining the string length that must be a value from 1 through 4000. It has to be a range from 1 to 4000. Because in the character, you have 1 to 8000. Because one character requires there one byte. But then it's NCAP, two bytes are required for single character. In the Unicode, the character is 16 bits. In the non-Unicode, normal cap, there one character uses one byte. But in the Unicode, two characters, two bytes are required for a single character. So when you say n care of n, what's happening exactly? You are allocating size here, n can be a value from 1 to 4000. Since each and every character requires two bytes of space. So n care of n, when you write, it's going to use here two bytes for one character. So therefore, the range can be from 1 to 4000 here. It's going to be 1 to 4000. Again, NCAR is going to be fixed length. Just like the character, it's going to be fixed length. Similarly, we have here N bar cap. So N bar cap is also similar to NCAR. What happens here? It is not going to be fixed length. It is going to be variable length. Depending on number of characters, it's going to use the space. Space will be used depending on the number of characters. How many characters you put, that much only will be used as far as N bar cap is concerned. Just like the var cap n. Similarly, we have here n var cap max. So here also it can be using up to 1 GB data. This can be using up to 1 GB data in this. Okay, since it's going to use actually 2 bytes of space, okay, 1 GB text data will be available, but overall it's going to be 2 GB data. So 2 GB data we can have with the n var cap max. And the other type of data is going to be here text end text and one more thing is image. So we have actually one text type of data. So this is what exactly fixed and variable uh, length data types for storing large non-unicode and unicode characters and binary data. For that purpose we use their end text, text and image. So image is for binary data. So text is for normal character type of data. End text is for actually, I mean uh, end text is for unicode type of data. So n text is for Unicode type of data. N text actually is variable, variable length Unicode data with a maximum string length up to 2 GB. So it can be up to 1 billion 78,000. Sorry, this is 1 billion. So 73,000 billion 741,823. That can be the range for the n text. Okay, so up to 1 GB, up to 2 GB data, you can use with n text. With text also, you can be having here 2 GB data. But with n text, you have there actually Unicode data. As far as text is concerned, here you can save only the I mean, character type of data. It's not Unicode. And one more thing is what here? Image. When you want to save binary data, you can be using image type of data. With that, you can save binary and you can save binary data. That can be up to 2 GB. So, Today, we have discussed about 
few types of data further we are going to be continue tomorrow with more types after that we further work with the sql server database thank you very much